The only time you're going to find me out here is if I'm going to be fishing here all day. It takes about 25 minutes to walk out here. It's not worth it if you're going to stay for an hour. When I finally get to the spot that I want to fish and I'm on a jetty like this, I try not to walk in the middle. I try to walk on the edge of where I want to fish. That way, if there's any spots I can fish, any deep holes, any ledges I can throw my bait off of, then that's where I'll fish. So, you know, you leave yourself open, you expose yourself to all the possible fishing areas. And if you see something along the way, you can just throw your bait out there. Not sure if you can see, but coming around this jetty right here, there's a bunch of water flowing around. So I'm going to cast right over here where the current comes around and hopefully there's some fish on this side waiting to ambush those guys right there. Oh, there's a fish right there. Damn, second cast. It feels like good rockfish. Come on up here, baby. Oh, it's fighting. It might be a ling. Yeah, it's a ling. Yep, little ling cod. There you go. Second cast. Maybe they're right here at the end of the jetty trying to get all this bait, trying to ambush them. There he is. These have to be 22 inches to keep. Uh, this one, I'm fairly confident that it's short. I'm fairly confident that it's short. Might be close, but you know, it's a little small, small little guy. He is pretty cool looking. Weird thing about these guys, I don't know if you can see on the side there, they've got these bugs that crawl over all, all over them, like parasites. And you'll often, often find inside the meat, if you let the meat sit for a while and it warms up, something about just letting it sit out like that, the worms will start crawling out of them. So, oh look, he just spit up something. Let me show you what he just spit up. I don't want to get my fingers in between his teeth, but... Yeah, oh here it is. Oh look, he's been eating anchovies, so it might be good to throw an anchovy color something. That's a dead anchovy right there. There's been a large school of bait, tons of bait every day here. Little guy, he's not so small, but uh, pretty sure he's not a keeper. Even if he was, he's a little bit too small to keep anyway, so toss him back. So my mentality and how I'm, I'm swimming this is I'm casting it into the current, letting it drop down. And just like a charter boat, I let it hit bottom, bounce it up, reel down a little bit, let it hit bottom, reel up, let it hit bottom. Just kind of the same technique you would use on a charter boat. And it's really, really deep here, so you gotta let it sink all the way to the bottom. You just let it sit there and it feels like it's not moving, it's not doing anything. But you wait about 20 seconds and then you'll feel it thump. And once it does hit bottom, Bring it up, let it bounce, bring it up, let it bounce. Say this over and over again because that's the most important thing. Find the bottom first. You never know if you're in 10 feet of water or 100 feet of water. See those teeth marks right here? And it's all tore up on the top too. So I'm switching out to this one anyway. This one should mimic an anchovy a lot more accurately than this thing. So the best way that I've found to put on a swim bait without punching a bunch of holes in it and to accurately get the hook out exactly where you need to be, just put it on your jig head just where, as if, if it's going to swim. So it's going to be swimming like that. And then right where this barb comes out, right where that tip of that hook comes out, just poke a little dot right there in the center. And then you follow where that shank of the hook would be along that swim bait right in the middle and you keep it as close to center as possible that way the swim action will be as natural as possible and you just feed it on just push it on push it on push it on and poke around just so that tip comes out that hole and if you do it right you can get it right on the first try just push it all the way on and there's your swim bait ready to go oh look Nice rockfish right here. Big blue. Big blue rockfish. Oh look, let's see if I can get him to hit. Oh, he just ran away. Damn. He's just swimming around here though. Big old blue rockfish. 
Hi. Hey man, I've seen your videos, dude. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Going salmon trolling? Good luck, man. I got a trick up my sleeve. Let's see if it works. So when I came out here, the plan was to catch some live anchovy and use live anchovy as bait. And I did not stop at the store. I did not get any frozen bait or anything like that. But I do have some anchovy fillets ready to be put on a pizza or ready to be put on your hook. And I was at home the other day and just thinking, you know how they put salt in swim baits? Well, these things are super salty and they kind of look like a pile worm. I mean, a little bit. I mean, you, you got to use your imagination, but with a size four hook and thread it on here a few times, I think this has some potential. I mean, it is anchovy after all, it is a fish, so this might be the secret to fishing. Put one on like that, and then I'm gonna let the other one dangle like a worm and just let it hang off like a piece of Uncle Josh pork rind. All right, now we rigged up with our anchovy, canned anchovy. Now when I cast out, I'm just gonna let the salt spread out in the water. And it was that, I think it was that organic olive oil too. So that olive oil should leave a little scent out there as well. Let's, let's find out, fingers crossed. Can canned anchovy do it? Oh, there's a bite. I'm not even joking. There's a bite. I didn't even cast it out for more than 10 seconds. Probably took the bait though. I got a fish. Oh, I got a fish. I think it's a big one too. I'm not even joking. There's a fish on here. I think I found the secret to fishing, canned anchovies. See my pole? That's a fish pulling it. But it's pulling it deeper into a hole, that's the only problem. Oh, I got him out. But I lost the fish. No? <laughs> I got it. This is proof that these fish, rockfish, will bite on canned anchovy. Huh, this is very interesting. So, in a past video of mine, I had a comparison between live pile worm and these Berkeley gulp pile worm. And I said the Berkeley gulp pile worm won because they stay on the hook a lot longer. You don't have to get your fingers all dirty. But if I were to compare these anchovy to those Berkeley gulp pile worm, I might have to give the favor to the canned anchovy for the simple fact that you can eat what you don't use as bait. I said it was a big one, never mind, I was just kidding. But anyway, try to catch another one. That was really fast, within 10 seconds, so. So you get a whole can of anchovies for about $1.99. You could probably go to the 99 cent store and get a can for 99 cents. There's about 30 little anchovies in here. You only get about 20 of them when you got Berkeley Gulp sandworms. I just want one more fish on these anchovies just to prove that the fish will bite them. I got one on anchovy again. A little bit bigger this time. Man, these rockfish, they like this canned anchovy. So check it out. Got that little rockfish. And there's the anchovy right there. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to regular fishing now. I think that I've proven that you can use canned anchovy to catch fish if you need to. If you absolutely run out of bait, there's no limpids, there's no mussels, and all you have in your lunchbox is a can of anchovies, you can use those to catch fish. It's proof right here. Anyway, it's, I don't know how effective it would be if you, if you fished it all day. I do have a can of sardines too, maybe I should use that. But nah, nah, I think I'm gonna go back to the swim bait a little bit. 
Oh, there's a fish. There's a nice fish right there. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Cabazon, baby. Look at that. That's a keeper cab if I ever seen one. So I was headed back and my shoulders were hurting. So I just stopped, took a rest on this little corner of the jetty, casted out the swim bait, and look what I pulled up. Big old cabazon right there. Beautiful, beautiful color. Let's give him a measure. I know for sure he's a keeper. Let's see. Yeah, 17 inches. Just like on that lingcod I caught earlier, earlier, this guy's got those little parasite things too. So if you ever want to eat cabazon or lingcod raw, like sashimi, make sure you freeze it first. Freeze it for a day and then it'll be good after that. If you look at... It's trying to go, but no, you're not going anywhere. You're going home with me. So he's got these huge, huge jaws, big jaws, and they use those to get crabs. They crush crustaceans, they crush crabs. That's one of their main diets. And the swim bait I'm using is that calico hunter. It's that dark red, kind of mimics a rock crab. So that's a great bait for lingcod, rockfish, cabazon, but that is a beautiful fish and I'm gonna take them home, have them for dinner. All right, real quick, let's see what's inside his stomach. Wouldn't doubt that there's a crab or two in here. Look, he ate one of these little, little kelp, kelp fish. That was in its stomach. That looks exactly like that red swim bait I was throwing earlier. And some digested crab. Into the cooler she goes. Sorry, no catch and cook today. No time. If I, I would if I could. I got the grill and everything, but it's just too late. Next time for sure though. And I had my butter too. Oh well, whatever. Next time.